G'day, welcome to the Open Wheels. So, in today's video, I've got a fair bit to get to and explain. Uh, this is a bit of a visual. Um, I'll do some drawing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, a couple of uh, subscribers have been contacting and, and mentioning, and I'm loving it. Um, either ideas or uh, questions that um, sort of lead to what I could possibly do for an episode um, for one of these uploads. And um, one of them was skin polishing. So I was questioned about how to get in to some really tight spots that your little bits may not get into. And is there an alternative way to using the Dremel and the bits? And I'm like, yep, there certainly is skin polishing. So I'll get onto that in another video, but this is the piece I'll be using to do that with. It's already a started carving, but still needs to be finished off. So I'll do the rest by hand, but that'll be another video. Uh, this one, I'm gonna get onto another query on how do you get your domes central, centered, and up to the center? And that's a great question, because it's something that since I was taught, I'm not really seeing at all. I see a lot of cutting and polishing, which is great, and, um, and I mean even in the industry. There's some really great work out there, don't get me wrong but a lot of it's not done always the way it's usually done. But that's more for the calibrated side of things as well, uh, plus the non-calibrated, I'll get to that. So this wouldn't be calibrated, I just did this by eye. Uh, if you can fault it, go for it. If you think putting a template on it and then cutting it straight still would have helped, whatever. <laughs> um, you're gonna get out of a stone as good as you can cut, I suppose. Uh, regardless of putting a template on or not. Uh, templates are brilliant for a guide, uh, but I think once you get the hang of shapes, um, it gets a lot easier. One thing I recommend is start practicing setting. Um, I encourage people to go out and start silversmithing. It's a very cheap start to the industry as far as cost for material, i.e. the silver. Some tools required, but even if you go and have a look at the way stones are set, if, if you've got access to a, a gem club or something and someone's doing some work there and you can watch them do it. But I'm gonna do it here as well. But it's always, the more you can get, the better. So there's a multitude of ways and reasons that a stone is cut the way it is, and they're not all the same. It's uh, depending on the stone and depending what setting it's gonna be put in, some can be adapted to either. So this one, for instance, it's gonna sit very flat and the, it starts dipping in almost immediately. So very low bezel, which won't hide much of the stone at all. And it will be a very, even in a bezel that surrounds the whole thing, to set it, uh, it'll still be very, very visible. Or the option is claws as well. It could go claws on this as well. Um, but not all stones are gonna be suited for both. Some are one or the other. Um, the benefit I get, again, I set my own work. I can only complain about my own work if I don't like the way it's cut. <laughs> so I think I cut all right. <laughs> no. So a piece like this, uh, it's got a bit of this on it. So I don't want that scene. So this is definitely not gonna be a claw unless I put a skirt, so to speak, I don't know what the word is, um, a bezel around it, but not one that goes up and closes, just to hide that, and then put some claws, but that'd be a waste, just put the bezel. So I'm pretty sure that one's just gonna be the bezel. But when you look at the top, and you look at where the bezel's gonna close over, pretty much that's all hidden anyway. Those little spots, so it'll just be stone. Uh, but yeah, not, not good for claws on that one. So, could be set for both, because it's cut for it, but for the appeal, I wouldn't put claws on it. Um, those are stones that have a lot of meat in them. So then you get some stones like this, a very thin bar, and so to retain some structural integrity, it had to have a bit of a potch back. 
Um, it's quite a beautiful bar, but again, it's only a very, very low cab over. It's not flat, um, but it's not it's not low, low, low dome either. It's just almost virtually flat, but curved slightly. So that would be, again, claws or uh, bezel, because the bezel will only just crimp over it. As you can see, it sort of immediately starts tapering in, sort of that way. And you could put a, a, a half bezel, like half, half the width of that stone in bezel and just have the top part shown. Or you could just put some claws on it and leave the sides showing because they're not un unpleasant. Um, and it doesn't need to be hidden uh, for sand issues or something. <laughs> Uh, what do we got here? That's sort of another one. Back there would have to be closed in. Had to stay that way just for structural integrity. Not visible from the surface. So quite a pleasing stone still. But this would be closed back. Um, as opposed to something like this. Oh, actually we'll go for something similar in size. So something like this, there's no issues with the back. This I would leave open back. There's, there's nothing that needs to just go away from sight. <laughs> um, but still nothing wrong with the viewable surface. So the stone still retains somewhat its value. But this, had it had sand, wouldn't be as valuable because it wouldn't be the double-sided type, viewable from both sides, worth opening and leaving the back open type setting, which can be appealing because then you get to see more stone. Um, so this one, again, it's domed right down to the base, down to the bottom, uh, about a mil up, half mil up, starts going in. And so very, very low bezel would just, just hug that stone into place. And again, open back, not a problem. You could claw set that as well. Um, I think just the little shallow bezel would cover less than the claws would block, but either which. Um, put that back there. Then you get to some stones that are, and, and, and this is all about how to finish up the edges I'm getting at here. They're undulated, so this one scoops down into the middle. So the bezel on this, or claws, claws might be more appropriate, but I'll have to hide that side there, because it's very shallow and weak. Um, but from the top, looks fantastic. Lightning Ridge material, that one. So, yeah, nice little pendant stone. Maybe a bezel, I dare say, with a closed back, obviously. There's nothing there you wanna see. And that's just because that's what that stone allowed. It's not like I chose it to look like that because I thought, oh, that'll be great. No, it was just not enough of it. So then with something like this, again, you could bezel, not a problem, or you could claw. So it will just sit in, in the setting, not a problem. Sit flat. If you wanted, you could have the back open. And yeah, I'd, I'd say a shallow bezel, as in one that only just comes up and over around, around the edge only just enough to hold the stone in. So with a bezel, you're basically making a surround with a hole the same size as the stone. And then when the bezel gets pushed in a little bit all the way around, it's the same thing that holds a ballpoint, the, the ball in a ballpoint pen without it falling out. It's basically bezeled in, <laughs> if, you, if you think about it that way. Um, that's another thing I like giving visuals and other ways of thinking about things so you get a com concept of something that you might be familiar with and you can go, oh yeah, correlate. Cool, got it. So yeah, that's why that one will be cut that way. Um, one like this, it just didn't allow for anything else. So that's, that's the way it is, that's there. And that would be, I would say a nice little sort of a bezel around the side with some claws coming up for the rest of the way. 
there's nothing wrong with the top half edge of that stone past that white point so if you came across there with a bezel you wouldn't even know it was there and then you yeah so finishing up a stone is what I'm getting at here is, is going to depend on the setting that you intend it to be set in and that depends on what the stone allows for um, again I'd put a bezel on this one it's not much to see on the sides it's not unpleasant but there's just not much to see um, and this one it's a little bit undulated again I think it dips down in the middle slightly there and there's not much on the back you want to see so here was a good example of the front's fine the back's not so to look at it for all intensive purposes you go what's wrong with it that looks fine it's got a great little shape beautiful color can't see a spot of sand in it anywhere yet doop, 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 doop. couldn't even get all the wax out from that little hollow there doesn't go in all the way but it's just enough to upset the balance of things on the back no open back for this one but check that out as if you'd know and it's strong enough to hold together it's not weak well you know it's it's definitely not strong because of the holes but it's not a structural issue at this stage it's thick enough stone it's big enough stone it'll hold together in a well-made setting which i'll make and that'll look fantastic so as we'll go close back uh got a couple of matrix ones here just to demonstrate so this one again flat base edges uh, they sort of taper in immediately just ever so slightly just in case you want to do a half bezel or something it'll still hug on to it enough but I'd even say half bezel with some claws coming up or just a bezel yeah on that one and very similarly this one as well but this one's another cut very low domed all the way to the bottom whereas this one didn't have a very high dome had more of a flat face didn't allow for much and the structural integrity of a stone that size if i'd have gone from the middle and gone why not give it more of a dome all the way to the bottom because the edges become very thin and fragile and i didn't want to structurally integrity risk its yeah stability so it stayed thick but this one was thick enough to get a nice high dome bring the edges down and still have it thick near the edges so it's not going to be a problem and i'd say a nice bezel very low bezel on this one just come up over that line So just a couple of more examples of different cutting, uh, the, the finish of the edges. And yeah, whether you're thinking bezel, you may have an idea, oh, I'm gonna bezel this one, oh, I wanna claw this one. Um, or, oh, this one might be someone else, they may deal with it, I may as well make it so it can be achieved either which way and they can make that decision later. Not forced to because of a certain cut. So something like this is more of a slab. This one, I don't even want to hide any of it. And I'd probably make up two wires coming down front and back on the edge with a brace in between every now and then. So you can see in through that edge, through the gaps, all the way around as a double-sided pendant and bezel it that way, just on the edges with a see-through bezel basically. Um, that's just awesome stone and I wouldn't want to hide any of it so it could also be done with a very thin down the center all the way around and then have some claws coming up over each side as well or even put a bezel around it bezel it over one side and then have claws coming to hold the other side in there's a lot of different options with a stone like this but it is not a dome and it's not that traditional cut, but still, yeah, 
that's a fantastic stone. Either which way you look at that. Um, sorry, I like my stones. So what I'm gonna get at in this video is how to finish a stone so that you have a dome in the center where it all meets up right there in, in, in the center of the stone and evenly distribute the dome and how to get that. And this is the part, I, I see bits and pieces like, oh yeah, that's that looks like you're on the right track and, and yeah, maybe I'm seeing some edited footage and not the whole process, but just, just the finish up of how to do that is a little bit, I'm not seeing too much of these days. It's more just a cut and a polish and what they think should look. So I've probably even got some examples of mine when I get a bit slack on some stones that are just like, yeah, I'll just cut and polish it, get it done. Um, it's still not hard to get the dome, but even for the little ones, it's still very hard. Like, <laughs> here we go, for this one. By the way, congratulations to the two people. These have been sold. This one has been sold to one person, these to another. And I'll be making some rings in another episode <laughs> coming up as soon as I get their ring sizes. Um, but this one, was very hard to, I'm just gonna zoom in a bit, it's so small. So to get that dome right over, it's still a little bit broad in the center. But from each edge, it's pretty even. And from that side there. The curve from either side starts the same level. I've even gone as far as right down the bottom been finished off it's got that little bevel on the inside that can allow for a little bit of overflow on silver solder on the inside of a setting and just so you don't get sharp edges that want to break off when they've pushed into a setting and that'll shatter your stone so I always finish the uh, base off best I can depending on the setting don't get me wrong sometimes I'll just leave them totally flat because I know or you make a setting that they'll sit in and not break but yeah, you always finish the edges up at the bottom. Uh, where is it? Same with that one. It's got a little low dome on that. All the way down to almost, so I'm going side onto you. Almost right down here at the bottom. It's just up about there. And then you just hug it a little bit with a bezel. That'll stay in place. Uh, but to, yeah, I'll, I'll, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a stone. There we go. Let's cut a stone and go through the process of how you end up with an even stone. So I'll just get one ready. Just hang on a sec. Um, That's some colour. Being a quartz matrix, a bit hard to see. But it is there. There we go. Let's see if we can get that to come out. So uh, out of this piece, I expect to get a reasonable length oval. Uh, it's gonna lose a bit off the edge here, but it's already sort of tapered in a bit for me. That's nice of it. Um, and lose a bit off this edge here. Let's trim it up. So somewhere around, something like that somewhere. See what we can get. And um, we'll go through shaping it from here into a, you know, just, yes, I could slice these bits off and keep them as chips, but then you gotta treat chips. Otherwise, what are they? They just don't really look like anything and I don't know much colors in those bits. So we're just gonna get rid of it and turn it to dust. Be done with it. Um, neaten up the edges, make sure that back's nice and flat. It's a little bit undulated. See a bit of a scoop there. And we wanna make sure it's nice and cubic so we can figure out what size dome we're gonna get. And then I'll show you how to go about, here we go, first drawing. So, once we've got our cube, and I'll draw it this way as well. So if you're looking at it that way, 
or if we're looking at it that way for this explanation. And I've enlarged this to bigger than that. But anyway, what we're gonna do is on the, well, here we go. <laughs> Third picture. So from that to now the top view, we're gonna find where the center is by measuring it, not just roughly drawing it. I can do both, but for this we'll measure it. And anyway, for this picture, I'll just quickly draw it roughly around there. So that will be the very top. Sorry. That will be the very top of the stone, right in the center there. And that'll be the part that we really won't need to touch till last. So we know it's always the center and everything gets brought up to the center. So that will be here and here, just to mark them on there. So from this side and this side, either which way you look at it, it's gonna be all the way around the stone. We're going to make sure it's got that much proportionately for this drawing roughly that much base that never gets touched once we've shaped it. So to shape it, the first part, you're gonna find your points here, 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 and here. And if you've got a template, use it because obviously we're starting out, and otherwise you wouldn't need to be going through this. <laughs> but failing that, I just draw a few little lines, like so, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> and then you find some points out here where you knock the corners evenly. And so from the same, if you measure from there to there, to there say, and there across is to there, we can match that bevel. And so you go through the beveling portion, which is how I would do it if I was doing this free form as well, by the way. Um, I'd, I'd just be doing this on the machine instead of having to draw it first, but there we go. And then we wanna meet, Somewhere around here, 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 somewhere out here a bit. And draw a curve. So coming from the side, like your edge. So I'm blocking the picture. So from these dots I've drawn, there, there. There, 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 there. Uh, just gonna rough it. Come out and start curving it in kind of like a pleasing curve. It's not hard to draw. You, you gotta have a little bit of confidence in yourself and you'll get it, not a problem. So you'd never wanna bring this edge here in or this edge here. And so just by making sure you come right down a bit before you start trying to get the curve going in. And again, coming to this point here. Sorry, to this point here. We keep this line coming around. And you know it's gonna to come to there. So we can knock a little bit off there, smooth it out a bit. So there we go, half the oval's being done. And then I'm just gonna quickly do the rest. And there, you're not gonna get much different result from a template. If you haven't got one, which I don't, that's how you get an oval.
going to get smoothed out and touched up by, by hand no matter what you do as soon as you um, even use a template. Um, just look at it, look at it and look at it and look at it and make sure you're definitely happy with the results. And then go for it. Um, it's, it's not too imperative at this stage that you get a calibrated stone. We're just practicing to get a well-shaped oval and get it to the center. So forgive me, I'm not trying to teach you how to go and get a job in the industry, but this is how we're gonna do it for today, because it's how I do it every day. Um, so there's our oval. Once you've got your shape, what we're gonna do, um, it's still gonna look like that from the side, because it's a block. You just can't see the curve from here to here, and the other side. but. Just imagine there is one. Anyway, from this line here that I've mentioned, is from there down, once you've got this shape, is never to be touched again until you start the pre-polish. Because from there to there will be our curve. And we're basically going to do the same as what we did here. It's no different, really. Um, so you you know it's going to start from here, and it's going to end here, which means out here somewhere is going to be where you think the curve's going to be. So you know you can knock this much of the corner off. So you just roughly knock it off without going over, and go, yep, that's going to be gone anyway. Somewhere like that even. All right. And the same again. So I'm gonna turn it around this way because I'm right handed and I'm side onto the camera. We're gonna go from this point. We're gonna come up somewhere about here to about here to do our curve. So we can correct the rest of it and smooth it out afterwards without cutting in too much. So, from there, it's going to be a pretty steep curve in, like so. Then we're going to smooth it out a bit. We'll continue down the other side. It's a bit of a process. Okay, so there's our nice dome. For the proportions of the height to the width, or length in this case, that's how that's going to look from the side. From the end, same again. We don't lose our edge down here. We come up a touch, around there, around there, off to the center a bit, around there, around there. We can start getting a bit closer and rougher now. We're getting the practice up, practice drawing. It's the same when you get on the wheel. Cut your corners. So yeah, obviously if I, I'd measure this out with a ruler, it might look a bit better than what it does at the moment, but that's basically what we're looking at. So there's how you get your curves, with or without a template, it's what it's gonna look like. Your template's gonna rub off eventually, so you're gonna have to cope. You're just gonna have to figure out the, the shape, memorize the shape. As I say, if you can leave this bit at the bottom, you never lose this shape. If you leave the top till last, you never, lose the height and length because you'll know the curve's just got to go somewhere around between that point and that point in a pleasing symmetrical way so that's the plan on how we're going to cut how we get this to go like that on the wheel that's i'll go into quickly so again if we're looking at the stone i'll use these this way once you've gotten rid of these edges, what we do is as we turn the stone around on the wheel, on this edge, we're gonna tilt it slightly towards the wheel 
to avoid this edge touching. And so if we're up against the wheel here, I'll hold it up that way. So this is where we want to find first with this edge and leave that. So we're going to put, say that's the wheel there. We don't want it to come up and eat that edge away. So we're going to tilt it. So it starts eating away here a bit until it slowly comes down to that point. And you'll be doing that by rotating it and getting this eaten away all the way around here, around the stone, all this first bit. Then it's once you get the line around there, tape it in a slight amount. It's the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one, and the next one. Each one of these is representing this rotating against the wheel and slowly turning it into the wheel into the center. Don't touch the center yet till last. How to get that is by turning your dot stick around and around and around against the wheel until it finally gets into the center. You've probably seen that a million times. Uh, we've got to do it nice and evenly though to get that nice even curve and to do that imagine this You've got one of those graphs. You probably did it in school um, Try again Phil Yeah, that one there we go figured it out you know what I'm trying to talk about? Again, I'm better at just showing you, so I'll probably shut up on these drawings. But I'm just trying to give you an idea of what's going through my head while I'm trying to get this in the shape that I want it to end up in without almost foolproofing it a bit, which is what I need. So I'm going to head over the wheel. We're going to go shape this up anyway. Let's get on with it.